This is Martin Giles of the Guildford Dragon News, and I'm, I'm pleased to uh, be interviewing uh, Councillor Fiona White, who's the lead councillor for planning at Guildford Borough Council this morning. Um, Fiona, welcome back to the Dragon, and thank you for your time for giving this interview. Morning, Martin. You must be very busy. Planning is always a bu busy subject, uh, any local planning authority, I guess. Um, yes, now the, yes. The, the background of this interview is that with the new Labour government, they've imposed new top-down housing figures, and the, the new figure for Guildford is, almost, uh, I think, roughly double what it was. It used to be 562 houses per annum, and now it's 1,102. And obviously that's going to present a challenge, and, and that's what I'd like to discuss. But if I could go back a step, what, in your view, are the causes of the housing crisis we're suffering from today? I think for a long period of time, we as a country, and I'm not talking about Guildford specifically here, as a country, we have failed to build enough homes to meet the needs of, of the uh, the people who live here. Um, so I think that's basically where the problem starts. I think there's also been an issue with local authorities being able to decide what the needs of our local people are. In other words, um, during the last local plan, obviously, there was a, a housing needs assessment that was carried out as part of the evidence. But we, as a council, have very limited powers to say to developers, what type of housing we need in developments. Um, so I think there's a twofold problem there. Okay, but the popular, uh, I mean, obviously our population is growing, um, but it's not through an increased birth rate. It is through immigration. That's, that's officially known from the Office of National Statistics. Uh, and the government is in charge of immigration policy. So they have been able, um, the government, national government I'm talking about, not councils. Um, so they've been able to, well, hopefully plan this. Why haven't they made sure that we had sufficient houses for the level of immigration they were planning for? Oh, I think that's probably a question that's a bit above my pay grade, if Fair you enough. don't mind me saying so. <laughs> okay. But do you think that they have failed? You know, successive governments, not just one party, successive governments. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I do think there has been a failure of government as well, and of the whole country in failing to build. It's I'm going to stop saying houses and say homes right. because they do, it's not always houses. No. Um, but we haven't built enough as a country. And yes, you could say that is uh, a failure of government to give a lead on that. Well, forgive me if I say houses instead of homes, but I think we no, all know what we're talking about, yes. Um, yeah. So, now, what are the implications of the reintroduction of this top-down uh, mandatory increased housing target for Guildford? It is going to be difficult. I, let me stay, say from the start, I am not generally in favour of top-down targets. I think what we build in Guildford should be based on evidence of our need locally. That doesn't mean we should sort of put walls around the borders or anything like that. But I think it should be based on evidence rather than uh, a top-down imposition from government. The implications are that it is going to be extremely difficult to double the number of houses that we have to build per annum um, we are going to have to look very carefully at how those houses can be fit in, into the borough. Um, we need to start with looking at brownfield sites, which of course is part of the hierarchy, but I have to question whether that is going to provide us with enough land to build on. Okay, so that's provoked several questions in my mind. First of all, okay. we've currently got 2,377 applicants on the council's housing register. They need yes. social housing. I mean, right. and, and it's been very difficult for local authorities to build council houses in recent times, hasn't it? Absolutely. And our planning officers do negotiate um, affordable housing 
numbers in um, in applications when they're dealing with them. But very often developers will push back and on a viability issue and say that they can't afford to include that number. Of but I'm not talking about people. affordable. I'm talking and, about... and social housing right. is even more difficult to yes. achieve. Um, so I absolutely agree with you. We do need more social housing. We also need housing for people like key workers. I mean, for instance, I was in hospital for a while last year and I noticed that a lot of the nursing staff were having to travel long distances because they couldn't afford to live close to the Royal Surrey. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take it that they're working a 12-hour shift and then they've got maybe an hour or even more travelling time at either end of it, that's a very long working day. So we need to provide for key workers as well, so that the people that we rely on to provide our services don't have to travel those long distances. So are you hoping that under the Labour government, the building of council houses will become easier? I think that is part of what they're aiming for. Um, I mean, if you look at the proposals, they've said that where there is building on um, what they're terming grey belt or even on areas of green belt, it will be a requirement of 50% affordable housing. And they have, I think, specified um, social housing as part of that. Yeah, OK. I I, I think um, uh, putting affordable housing and social housing together, com- to my mind, complicates the issue because the demand for those sectors is quite distinct. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 the count it's the social housing that the figure of the um, housing register seems yeah. to indicate that is what we really need in Guildford at the moment. I agree with you, and I think from what I've read, it is part of the government's aim that they will increase the levels of social housing that is built. Okay. Now you also mentioned the green belt, and you know Guildford, even after the last local plan, which did designate or, or take some areas out of the green belt. It's still, I think, over 80% green belt. So there are a lot of constraints on the borough, aren't there, if, if we're going to respect mm. the green belt? Absolutely. Um, and that is going to be one of the major problems that we're going to have to try to address somehow. On the assumption that this um, figure of 1,102 per annum uh is finally adopted, we're going to have to work very hard to um, protect the Greenbelt as far as we can. And right at this moment, I'm not going to offer you any guarantee that we won't be looking at any development in the the Greenbelt, simply because we haven't looked at the evidence and looked to the availability of sites. This has come at us rather quickly, I'm afraid. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to take a little while uh, for okay. us to be able to work out how we can deal with those numbers. But from what you say, then, it's not going to be an easy option to find grey belt, whatever that actually means. I mean, I, I'm a bit confused because when they introduced the term, they talked about previously developed sites, mm. which in my view, we'd always previously called brownfield. Even if it even if it was in a site surrounded by greenbelt, it was still an area that could be redeveloped. Okay. Am I wrong? Okay. Um, well, I mean, technically, a lot of it was washed over by greenbelt. So therefore, Greenbelt policies had to be taken into account when assessing an application there. But I think in principle, you're right. If the land had been previously developed, it was more likely that um, an application would succeed as long as, as long as it met all the other planning. Yeah, yes, yes, quite. But I mean, we haven't have, have we got those such areas? I mean, have you, you haven't identified, as far as I understand it, any areas of grey belt yet? I'm not sure that the government has even been really clear on what its definition of grey belt is. Um, And that does present us with a difficulty. And we haven't had time yet um, to go out and actively look for grey belt areas. 
no, well, fair enough, because as you say, it's an, and you know, it has happened all quite quickly. Um, yeah. Now, do you think the council can and will resist the new targets because they are extremely challenging and in, in, in a borough which is so predominantly um, greenbelt, aren't they? Martin, I think you've probably seen the response which uh, the council leader and I sent to the Deputy Prime Minister. And I think you will have seen from that that we have stressed how very difficult it is going to be to achieve the targets. And we've set out in that letter what the constraints are um, within the borough, the uh, amount of land where there are special planning protections like the Surrey Hills and Thames Basin Heath areas and specific conservation areas, which leaves us very little land within which to fit all those additional numbers. We will, as I said earlier, look first at the green, uh, the, the um, brownfield sites. We're certainly looking um, in detail at for instance, um, Guildford itself, the, the town rather than the borough. Um, and we're exploring all those opportunities. But I did say to you earlier, I can't guarantee that we no. will be able to fit all those numbers. They're very big numbers um, into urban areas. So should we, well, presumably then within the uh, range of options will be further strategic sites, the kind we've seen at Wisley and... Um, Black, uh, Blackwell Farm. You can't rule you're, it out. You're, oh, I can't rule it out. Uh, that's as far as I can go, because no, otherwise we're going into the realms of speculation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but people will speculate, won't they, Fiona? Because, you know, people Absolutely. will be worried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, can I just stress to you, this is a proposal from the government. It's not something that Guildford Borough has gone out looking for. And if the government does insist on this level of housing being built, we will have to find a way of building it. And there will be times when we have to make some very difficult decisions as part of that process. OK, now, one of the options, of course, um, to meet the housing target would be to build upwards. Um, and we know that that has been controversial. How, how now that as far as I understand it, there is um, an intention to put in place uh, a supplementary planning document on building heights. Um, isn't isn't the urgency of that even greater now? Well, it is something that um, the planning policy team are working on, um, and we hope to have a bit of progress towards the end of the year. But I must stress that an SPD, supplementary planning document, cannot introduce new planning policy. It can all only pull together what is there in the existing local plan, um, the part one in 2019 and part two in 2023. Um, so it cannot create a policy that doesn't exist within our local plan already. Right. So it won't have a lot of teeth then, will it? Um. It won't have any more teeth than we've got at the moment. No. Okay. All right. Um, any any changes in policy would have to be done as part of the local plan update process. Yes, and that's that's going to take longer, isn't it? It is. Yes. So what's the what's the sort of expectation timeline on that? Um, it will probably take us three, maybe four years. Okay. Right, well, that's clear. Um, how can now one of the issues with the existing local plan has been that infrastructure has not kept up with development, um, and the council once again the council can't just magic infrastructure up. It's not within your power or in your gift. Yeah. Um, so, isn't that going to be an even bigger problem if our housing target has doubled? And once again, Martin, it is something, an issue that we have raised with the Deputy Prime Minister as part of our letter to her, um, pointing out that this has been a difficulty. Um, large amounts of housing without the infrastructure uh, to go with it, it is really unacceptable. 
Um, but as you said, we as a local planning authority don't have the powers to enforce that. So what we have said to her is that we believe that there ought to be a duty on the people who deliver the infrastructure, for example, the county council when it comes to highways and education, health when it comes to GP surgeries and medical facilities, um, water companies, energy companies, there should be a duty on them to cooperate with the local planning authority to make sure that the infrastructure is delivered. Do you think the government fully appreciate the problems these housing targets are going to create? In fairness, I think they are also looking at um, a national infrastructure policy. But the trouble is, I don't know how long it's going to take for that to come into place. And we could be faced with having to provide the additional housing numbers long before that is available to us. But, I mean, some of these infrastructure problems are... are... Very tricky, aren't they? We, we, you can, the A two eight one already a very busy road going down from south from Guildford. Lots of housing development in Waverley Borough. Lots more planned going to be planned mm -hmm. here. You know, you can't just widen. You can't make that road a dual carriageway without knocking down lots of houses, which would seem to defeat the object. And and you can imagine the uproar that would cause. Uh, I don't understand how they feel that. Th these targets are, 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 are achievable. Martin, I can't disagree with you on the infrastructure problem. It is a problem. It is a major problem. And we have drawn that to the government's attention. Okay. I mean, and we haven't even talked about water supply and, and other areas. We could talk about, you know, we could go through a whole list, but they're all difficult problems yeah. to solve, aren't they? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, in the uh, 2019 election, the Lib Dem party um, promised 3,000 new council homes. When, when, you know, there's been very few built, hasn't there, to, it, since that time, and we're well into that 10-year period now. Are you hopeful that you can at last get cracking with council homes if the new government makes it more possible? I very much hope so, because... As we've discussed earlier, that is one of the major needs that we have within the borough. So I hope that it will be possible for us to get on with that more. I mean, it has, we made a promise in good faith. It was a stretch target to start off with. You know, it was never going to be easily achievable. We have still got a bit of time. Um, so I hope that the new government and its policies will mean that we can crack on with that. But in hindsight, it was a bit of a foolhardy promise, wasn't it? Because a lot of people at the time thought it wasn't possible. Um, as I said, it was a stretch target. If you only ever set easy targets, Martin, we don't get anywhere. You've got to challenge yourself when you set targets. Yes, but when you're setting a target, you want to make it achievable, don't you? I think we had a lot of difficulties in the, over the last five years, not least the fact that um, the costs of development have gone up uh, by huge amounts. I mean, developers are telling this all the time. Um, so, you know, that's something that hit us. Um, we had COVID. I know everybody says we had COVID. We had the uh, fuel um, oil crisis and all that sort of thing. So it has been a difficult time to do it. We will do our level best to achieve that by the end of the 10-year period. And as I said, I hope that government policies will enable us to do that. OK. And finally, um, if, if I can just ask this rather detailed question, uh, you may have seen um, the story where the, the, um, it was revealed that the council when they're dealing with applications for, to go on the housing uh, register from foreign nationals, they have to just rely on their honesty, whether they've got a, 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 um, a house elsewhere or an interest in a property elsewhere. Isn't that rather unfair that the, the, the test is more severe for people who are here than it is for foreign applicants? Sorry, Martin, that's way outside my planning okay. portfolio remit. And I'm, right. it's not something I'm going to venture into, I'm afraid. OK, well, listen, 
Uh, you've got a big job ahead of you. Good luck with it. And thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.